what we were doing, no one else was doing. No one knew how to cut hair that way. So we were very unique. The 60s, 70s, it was an entire revolution, not only in the beauty industry, but in everything. The Beatles had just come to America. Clothes changed, everything changed. If you were in that world, a hairstylist, you were a rock star. I mean, literally, you were a rock star. I grew up in a really tough neighborhood as a young boy, East Harlem, which was really a bad place to grow up in. A lot of my friends got killed. A lot of them went to jail. It was that kind of neighborhood. I was lucky because I had great parents who motivated me. I knew very early on that I wanted to make something of myself. I got a job at the Copacabana in New York City. You know, I met Frank Sinatra, I met Nat King Cole, uh, Tony Bennett. It taught me a lot of how to deal with people. And in our business, it's really important. There was a beauty salon right across the street from where I lived, and two pretty girls owned it. So naturally, I would go in and, you know, and talk to them and you know, hang out on the weekends, help out. And they would say to me, you know, Peter, you, you know, you really got a hand. You're really good at this. Why don't you go to beauty school? And once I made up my mind to do it, then I, I gave it everything. I, I made sure that I was going to be the best guy in that school. Paul Mitchell and I, actually, we opened the first haircutting salons in America. There were no haircutting salons. They were just traditional you know, beauty salons where a client would come in, get a hair shampooed and somebody would set it and they'd sit under a hair dryer for an hour or so, tease it up, that type of thing. With us, it was all about the haircut. I had no money and my brother loaned me $2,000 and I opened up the first little salon, tiny little place, I think it had five styling chairs. In a matter of a month, you couldn't get an appointment with me. I mean, it happened that quickly. And in those days, interesting, did you know that a man could not go into a hair salon and get a haircut? It was against the law. Yeah, it was illegal, literally illegal. Because the barbers had a union, and because there was this whole revolution that started in the beauty industry, we were taking a lot of business away from them. And I remember Paul Mitchell calling me up and saying, listen, Peter, we're gonna fight this. You know, we're gonna show them. And we did. We took it to the Supreme Court and we won the case because it was unconstitutional. And the next day, the terminology unisex was created. We created that. We were the place on Long Island. If you asked any baby boomer today, where did you get your hair cut? You'd say, oh, I got my hair cut at Peter's place. I found a great space in New York City on Madison Avenue, which at the time was the largest salon in New York City at 50 stations. And some of the most talented people worked in that salon. Sally Herzberg, Oscar Blondi, Kevin Mancuso. These are all superstars today. Paparazzi downstairs, clients like Julia Roberts and Meg Ryan and Brad Pitt. So it was a very, very exciting atmosphere to be in. But looking back on it, I think it evolved because I was so serious about what I was doing. And even people in the industry, competitors who didn't like me, respected me because I took such great pride in what I was doing. And then a friend of mine came to me and said, you would be great on television. I know some people at QVC. I said, what's QVC? And what this does, it closes the cuticle, it gets rid of all of those frizzies, it leaves your hair like silk. I'll never forget the day that I went to QVC, the first time. They said, okay, you, 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 you feel pretty comfortable? I said, yeah, I'm fine. Lights go on, the red lights go on, you know, Peter Coppola is here, you know, welcome Peter, oh Peter. Before I knew it, she said, oh Peter, thank you so much for being here. It was wonderful, thank you. I said, well, I wonder if I did something wrong. So I get off the air and everybody's clapping. Peter, you, I said, what happened? Oh, you sold out. I said, I sold out. You were telling me I sold 5,000 pieces in less than five minutes, you sold out. And that's, that's how it started. You know, they talk about sexy hair, that's sexy hair. I think life is such an exciting opportunity. 
every day a new idea, a new concept. It keeps me going every day, it really does. You know, and one of the things that I've always tried to do in the beauty industry was to address the real needs of women today. As a young boy, my father would say to me, never lie to anyone. So we were kids, we'd say, okay, you know, dad, you know. He said, no, because no one is that important that you have to lie to them. That's important in the beauty industry, creating products that consumers are gonna trust so that when you say something, you can stand behind it. That's important to us as a company.